Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. I'm Nick Azera, the Information Outreach Manager for Manatee County and um, our, our Public Information Officer. I think we all know each other, but uh, thank you for being here for our annual media day. It's the day before hurricane season starts, and uh, we wanted to invite you to spend some time with our Emergency Management Chief, Steve Lachauer. Steve and his team were part of a group of about 30 people from Manatee County, first responders, law enforcement officers, fire, that went to the Florida Panhandle last year, uh, only days after Hurricane Michael hit. And some of the visuals that were airing on the monitors before we set up this morning were taken by those folks, uh, the, the people who saw the the, the destruction and, and devastation that occurred in the panhandle. And, and so they learned some important lessons. We like to, we like to think that we uh, have a good, a good preparedness plan here in Manatee County, but there's, we're always working to, to do more and to inform the residents about what they can do to be ready for hurricane season. In Hurricane Irma, we rec uh, experienced record uh, turnout for our uh, emergency shelters. They were at 95% capacity. And what uh, Chief Lishower this morning is going to talk to you about is having a better understanding of whether you can shelter in place at your own home in Manatee County. And, um, and if you need to evacuate, what your best options are. It may not be a public shelter. Uh, if, you're, if you're close to a family or friend that is in a, a safe zone, it's probably better to go there because the shelters get cramped and loud and uh, uncomfortable very quickly. So they should be a last option. After Chief Lischauer speaks, we're going to turn it over to our Public Works Director, Chad Butso, um, to talk about a lot of the, the local road issues that we experience anytime, not just during hurricane season, but anytime there's a strong uh, storm, strong rain uh, in Manatee County in low-lying coastal areas. You're you're bound to see some standing water and some localized flooding. So, we want to talk to you about um, what our public works crews do when that happens, and and of course pass along the word to our residents about what they should do uh, if they see flooding roads or or standing water in Manatee County. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Chief Litchauer, and and uh, we'll invite questions a little bit later. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Lachar, Chief of Emergency Management, and uh, you see up on the monitors the spelling of my name if you want. And also, I'm going to run through some slides quickly, and if you wanted copies of those too, I can provide. But um, as Nick was saying, uh, we have a couple other people in the, in the audience here. I want to uh, acknowledge a couple from my staff, Joel Richmond. Joel, raise your hand. Tristan Morath from Emergency Management over here. And then we have uh, from Public Works, as uh, Nick said, we have uh, Chad and Myra over. And then we have uh, Stacy from 911. And then Amy back in the back corner from Utility. So we have quite a few people represented here from the county. So what I want to do real quick is go through some of the highlights of what we, the message we want to get out. Um, a lot of you saw my name pushing out information after Hurricane Michael because when I got up there I became the lead PIO for, for Gulf County for about 10 or 11 days and there were no media lists, no anything. So I reached out to our local Tampa Bay market to help push it out and then over days or weeks we developed that list. And one of the things that was a challenge to us up there was when there's no telephones, no cell coverage, no internet, how do we get the message out? So one of the most important things we did up there is I dubbed it Pony Express. We did daily flyers that was pushed out to the shelters, to stores as they opened and so forth. So that's something for y'all to think about is if you had no power, no internet, um, how would you put, push the message out? Um, and I want to hit on a couple new initiatives, and I'm going to run through it quick. I'm not going to do the total slide presentation, but what we're looking at this year that's really important that between Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Michael changed the philosophy and the approach that uh, we across the Florida is going to be doing. So we know obviously hurricane season starts tomorrow through um, the end of November, September the 10th is the peak of the season, and those little dots on the right-hand side are the plots that have occurred over the last 100 years. 
This is something really important for us to know, and we've covered it this week in a couple specials, is some of the most major hurricanes that hit Florida were nothing to category four and five in three days. Three days is not enough for anybody to start preparing. That's why we're encouraging people to have a plan now because in that three-day period is not time enough. So we're encouraging them to have a, a plan way, way before any, any onset. So from Hurricane Michael back, it went from almost nothing to a Category 4 or 5 in three days. Um, the message we want to put out, it, it only takes one, whether it's the beginning of the season, the end of the season, or whatever, but it only takes one. We don't want people to get out there and be place and oh it's going to be a slow year or whatever so that's one of the big messages we want to get out this year um, storm surge so important what storm surge can be the right hand picture picture I actually took is one of the mo main roadways that we saw up there that had debris in the middle of the road and the flattened area so they saw um, a lot of storm surge up in the panhandle the other message that the uh, state of Florida came out with this year is know your home. We for years have brought up about learning the level, meaning what evacuation level you live in. Now we want them to learn their home. Because if they live high and dry in a well-constructed home, and as you see on the slide, if it was built after 2012, they withstand 150 mile winds. So we want, as Nick was alluding to, the other message is, we want them to evacuate tens of miles and not hundreds of miles. So if you live outside an evacuation area in a, a well-constructed home, we want you to uh, shelter in place if you can't. Um, he mentioned um, we have a hurricane kit in the back and we can go over that in a little bit, but the other message we're wanting this year is, we used to say be prepared for three to five days, now the message is a week. Be prepared for a solid week. Um, so know when to evacuate, that's so, so important. Don't wait till the last minute, the roadways are going to be be closing down so people evacuate for two reasons one is surge and the other item that we want to make sure the message out about is if you live in a mobile home or a manufactured home doesn't matter where it's at it can be 30 miles inland or 50 miles inland and 20 miles from the water manufactured homes and mobile homes must evaluate in level a also so we want to make sure those people know that uh, learn your level. Those are in our, all our hurricane guides. You can get that off the website. Um, if you must evacuate, try to go to a family or friend. Um, shelters, as we put it, are last resorts. They are for, um, they provide a safe environment, but that's it. There are a, it's a lifeboat, not a cruise ship. This slide is very important to know about that first responders with sustained winds quit responding at a point in time. There were multiple hours during Hurricane Irma here that first responders were not responding because of the winds. So as I said, shelters is a last resort and that's what we want people to realize. Um, special needs, medical needs, if they need power, please sign up beforehand. If they need transportation, please sign up beforehand. This slide, Nick, do you want to come up and talk about this slide real quick? Um, Thanks, Steve. Um, you know, we stress this every year, too, um, the importance of following the county's social media accounts. So we if people are following us on social media, they'll be able to see that uh, directly from the emergency management chief, the people who are in charge during an event. So. Uh, I know a lot of you already uh, like and share and follow the county's accounts. Please do that if you don't, and um, and look look to those resources during the storm if you can't be here in the EOC. And the, our media number is also on this. Um, a lot of times my cell phone blows up, but this will be the best number to reach the county in a storm. Thanks. And in speaking of social media and the panhandle, that's how we got the message out. Uh, when we didn't have power, uh, we used some cell phones off of chargers in cars, so social media is very important. Uh, we encourage people to sign up for Code Red, that they get alerts directly from us. And so with that, um, 
we want to bring chat up and then we'll all answer questions. A couple other people came in, uh, Randy Warren, PIO with the Sheriff's Office is back here, so he's available here too for questions also. Chat. Thank you guys, I think you're gonna make me take almost as much time as you guys did. We run into during uh, significant weather events, a lot of times where we run into, the first thing I wanted to cover was terminology. Uh, the first time when Nick, uh, weather starts coming in, the, everybody, the reporters are always asking status, 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 and we always get that word, are roads closed, or what's flooded out, or what's there, so. Uh, you, and social media doesn't help us exactly on that because we're not all talking the same terminology. So when you hear a report from the county that we have no roads that are closed, that means there is a road, when we close a road and we give you a status, this road is closed, that means there is significant water on it, we have deemed it impassable, and it is just unsafe to be kept open for traffic. That's when we will bring barricades out, that's when we will potentially, depending on this, uh, importance of that roadway set up a detour or something. So that's the difference. It doesn't mean during a major downpour or something that there's not local street flooding where the roads filled up to the curb or a little bit maybe up to the sidewalk or something like that. So that's just a difference in terminology. Sometimes I think you may in the past have felt frustrated between the reports that we give out, but that's the officialness. Somebody may call dispatch and say, uh, West Bradenton has several roads underwater. Well. That, that's a short-term thing, it rained hard, it filled up, it'll go away in an hour or something. But during major events, when we say closed, it is closed, we do not want, we'll either have barricades or a uh, MSO officer in that area. And those are the first things I just wanted to make sure we cover. Uh, during those major events, it doesn't have to be the hurricane. Uh, everybody remembers our August 2017 event where we had, depending on where you were, 14 to uh, uh, 20 inches of rain in the county. Don't drown, turn around. You don't know, our stress of dealing with that is you don't know the conditions underneath the water of what you can see. It might look like it's only six inches of water. If that six inches of water has a major pipe that's underneath it that has now been compromised, the road may not still be there when you drive through. Uh, be cognizant of your neighbors. We have a lot of things that are not an issue in a neighborhood, especially if the water has temporarily risen and they're scared to death, but it stopped. Imagine if it stopped just this short of your doorway and you're, you're out, you're praying, you're saying, yay, it stopped, my house is safe. But then the four by four drives through the road and leaves a six inch wake and pushes the water right into your house. The water stopped, but your neighbor didn't necessarily help you out. So those are the situations we ask to not make things worse. Post storm situations, uh, specifically during the Irma, we had moving blackouts because there were areas that had power that got knocked out, that knocked traffic signals out in various places. And then during the restoration process of uh, FPL, they have to take certain zones down to work on zones and then they come back up. So it moved around a little bit and it was slightly frustrating. But what we saw, what we saw out there was everybody totally forgot their rules of the road books and when there's a traffic signal and it's dark, you are supposed to treat that as a four-way stop. Uh, I would ask that you please, public, remind your younger kids. Uh, just, it's, a, it's an effort to just remind yourself it's the safest way to get around. Um, other things I, I stress to the public is we're all in this together but there is no, uh, Steve may have said it, there is no perfect storm, but when we have time to plan and set these things out so everything goes in the proper order, so we're prepared for the textbook hurricane, get your stuff done. So many decisions on the county par county's part, you look at us potentially and say we're overreacting. It takes time to get things done. If the forecast is looking like we're in the cone and we're gonna be impacted, we're, be, we're setting up and we're offering sandbags in that landfall minus four, minus three time frame. That's when you need to be thinking about preparing for yourself. We get closer into that time frame of landfall minus two days, one day. We have other highly important things that have to be done, prepositioning equipment, removing and storing equipment in a proper place so we're ready to respond following landfall. Those minus two, minus one days are not your days to be getting 
sandbags. That is, uh, that becomes a lower priority mission for us. Those are D minus three, D minus four day preparations. We beg you to look into that. Uh, I come from up north. And during the winter time, you snow and you plow the snow and the uh, fire hydrants get buried. It's your homeowners that if you want to be sure that the fire department knows where those fire hydrants are, you dig them out and you move them. I compare that to in, in Florida when a major weather event is coming, know where your inlets are. Know where the uh, catch basins are that bring and get the water off the street. Yes, it's our responsibility to maintain those systems, but if it's as simple as just removing a few leaves or a palm leaf or something to make sure it's functioning, please do that. If you're unable to do that, call it in. We do not have magical sensors that tell us where these problem areas are. But during an event, if it looks like something's starting to plug up, if you're able to, you can check on it or you can give us better information. Please be aware of that thing. That's how you can take care of yourself and give us better information. It is, I'm at this address, but the inlet is and the street is flooded 40 feet away from my house or to the east, to the west. A great description will help dramatically because even when we're responding, the roads are already flooded. And yes, we do have some electronic maps, but that direct knowledge of exactly where some of the issues are would be a great help and improve our response time to serve you. <clears throat> uh, a post-storm thing. We did Irma. We went through Irma in 2017. Blessedly, it was not that bad. It, we, had a, we had issues. We had trees down. We had debris and various things. Our plan is for a consolidated first-in team response time as soon as the winds are down and it's safe to operate. So we get below that 55, 45 miles per hour range. We have a heavy equipment, whether it be a loader or a grade all that goes out with an FPL team, an ambulance, a sheriff, a fire department, uh, and, and other chainsaw crews to clear primary roads. They're supposed to be the first people on the road. Let us go pick up all the nails that are out on the road. Let us go verify it's safe for the public to be out and about. What we discovered during Irma, because it wasn't just a complete total disaster, uh, curfew hadn't been lifted, but roads were pretty busy, and that doesn't necessarily help uh, the cleanup efforts. Uh, the biggest issue we have is down power lines, and that's why we have an FPL crew that goes out with our crew, and we really wish uh, people would honor that. Don't get in too big of a hurry. Inspect your property, look around, but please don't get in your cars until it's been declared uh, safe to go out. Uh, those are pretty much my major highlights that I wanted to uh, put out there. Uh, turn it back over to Nick uh, for you guys to ask questions if you have some. Thank you, Chad. Um, Amy Pilson, also from uh, our utilities department, is here to say a few words. Um, Chad and Amy will be available for questions as well as uh, Chief Lishauer after the, the press conference here, but um, Amy is able to speak on behalf of our utility department that oversees debris removal, and that was a huge issue during, uh, really after any hurricane, but especially learned by a lot of our residents after Irma. So, and, and uh, Amy can talk a little bit about the in-home issues a lot of residents experience when the power's out, so. Good morning. As Steve was talking about now, you know, making your preparations and, and getting your hurricane kits ready, what we're trying to emphasize is that now is the time to start working on your yard. Now is the time to trim your trees and get ready for heavy winds, not when they're three days out. What happens then is that you will be making your preparations and putting your yard waste out at the curb, but if the winds get too high, we have to cancel the collection. And then the material that's at the curb can become projectiles and, and cause issues. So we want you to make all of those preparations now clean your gutters so that you don't have um, additional rain damage inside your home and make sure that you you can take all your efforts then three days out move all of your materials from your yard your yard your lawn furniture and extra pavers things like that that would be outside that you can move inside but do your trimming now um, another message that we have is the proper separation everyone was concerned about the collection and how long it was taking but the
better prepared the items are that you place at the curb for collection, the faster it will go for us in, in making the rounds and the passes. So be sure that it's all prepar properly separated and we have information on that and it's on our website, website about how to separate your vegetative debris from your um, household furniture and your regular garbage. Nick alluded to um, some issues that people have and Chad was talking about alerting people when you have um, storm water and flooding is beginning in the streets. One thing that we want to emphasize is please don't lift the manhole covers to try to stop the flooding. Um, that A lot of those are the sewer system which is not the same as the um, stormwater system and so it can cause potential um, issues for the stormwater or for our sewer system. Additionally, when the power is out, if your power is out, there is a good chance that the lift station that operates your area could be out. And if you are flushing your toilets when the lift station is out, you could get sewage back up into your home. So you want to be a little bit cautious. And if it's not in your home, it could be in your neighbor's home. <laughs> so we, we want to caution you to check and um, try to make sure that that is the case if you are without power, especially for several days. Um, if you do see a lift station that has a, a red light with going off on the top of it, you can call the phone number. Um, and then just monitor things. We will be making announcements about garbage collection ahead of time. We will be making announcements about disposal of sandbags and things that might have be unusual for you after the event. So continue to monitor the social media and all of the other um, avenues of communication that Nick mentioned earlier. And that's what I have. So real quick before we um, take on questions, I brought out um, over here on the counter is what Amy was talking about is a list of how to separate your uh, debris. And I think that's very important. So uh, you all know we have hurricane guides. We have some available in the, in the back. You can get it offline. But the key points I wanna, wanted to bring up is learn your level of evacuation. Know your home. It only takes one. Have an evacuation plan. Make a kit. Sign up for Code Red. So we'll take a few questions now. Then we'll go back in the back and look at putting together a hurricane kit. So we'll entertain questions now. Okay, um, we have, I believe the number now is 27 shelters. We in Manatee County do not open all shelters at once. Uh, we th Of those, three are designated as pet friendly. We will open shelters in a phase um, concept, meaning depending on which way the storm's coming, what kind of storm it is, whether it's a, a rain event or surge or wind will depend. So through y'all, we'll, we'll put out in a phase concept of which shelters are open. Uh, the list is in the guide, the list is on the, on the website. But here's the thing about the shelter. You only get 20 square foot per person. That's less than the size of a sheet of plywood if you look at how big a sheet of plywood is. A sheet of plywood is 32 square feet. And that's all, and I can tell you in the panhandle where a shelter would be accommodating less than 100 people at the last minute, they had over 300 in it. So we have to be very careful. Talking about pets, those are dog, cats, and birds. We saw chickens, pigs, snakes, iguanas, and goats in shelter. So we want to enforce upon them being domesticated animal. But a shelter is a safe place and you are fed. There's no cots, there's no beds, um, limited restrooms because they're a school, meaning that they have to walk away to get to the restroom. So. Any other, somebody over here had a question. Well, I just went over that uh, learn your level of evacuation. Right? Yes, so sure. Yeah. Construction, correct. Yes, uh, it only takes one. That's what we want to impress upon. It only takes one storm. The other is have an evacuation plan, and in that plan, have a kit. And as I said earlier, if you want copies of these slides, get with me. Uh, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Uh, just, just our initiative about knowing your home and it only takes one, that's our major things that we're, we're pushing out this year. So it's always about uh, having your kit together and having a plan together. Any other questions at this point? Right, so spe um, special needs is what we define as medical need that a person needs power to live. And they can go on the website again and sign up for it. And, and lack of a better word, we're begging them to sign up beforehand because in Hurricane Irma, we saw throughout the state four times of those people that were on the list signed up in the last 48 hours. So what I say is, if you're planning on a party at your house this weekend for 25 people, and within two hours of that party you had 100 people, that puts in, into an issue, especially special needs, because then you need more medical uh, providers, you need oxygen, you need all of those kind of things. So in the time of needing to sign up for special needs is again now, than later. Anything else? Okay, I'm gonna walk back to the back table and as Nick said, all of us will be available for further questions. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna review some of the major points of a hurricane kit. Uh, I have a little story to tell you real quick. Yesterday afternoon, uh, myself representing Mantee County, uh, Ed McCrane, the chief of Sarasota County Emergency Management, uh, was present and then we had the privilege of Joby Smith who was or is the emergency manager for Bay County where Mexico Beach is we presented to the Longboat Key Chamber members and one of the restaurants provided a appetizer that was made out of a hurricane kit and this is what they provided and I got to tell you I had three of them uh, spam sliders so with the exception of the Hawaiian rolls that would have been bought right away, everything else were, was prepared cold and out of a kit. It was Spam, a, a teaspoon or so of barbecue sauce, uh, the dried onions that you use in green bean casserole, and a pickle. And it was excellent. So what we encourage people to do, and even some of our staff does, is they actually eat what's in their kit towards the end of the year or what we also do is recommending at the end of November when all the different churches and clubs are holding can drives and food drives go ahead and as I call it a uh, gift the food out of your kit to a needy cause those beef stews and things like that so in our kit um, we have examples of food and obviously you want canned food so it can be beef stew or chili, and all those things are cooked, so whether you had to eat it cold or not, you wanna have um, food in a can. One of the major important things is a weather radio that can be run off a of battery. So if you lose electricity, you have a weather radio, and having that year around will keep you informed of what they're going on. Obviously, a, a dust mask to keep um, uh, germs from coming, bleach, because as Amy was alluding to, if lift stations go out or whatever, uh, what I did not mention in my presentation is usually there are, in, in this case in Hurricane Michael, there were more people that died after the storm than before, during the storm, from uh, flooding, from fallen trees, but there's a lot of diseases out there. If you think a home, what's in your garage? You have paint, you have cleaners, you have fuel, you have the, all sorts of things. If that gets flooded and you're walking around in your yard in that water, who knows what you're catching. So uh, once you go to clean up, you wanna use bleach. Obviously you wanna go have some cash because what you find is, again, when power goes out, our plastic doesn't work anywhere. So before a storm, have some cash. Flashlights, um, we have an example of the old style cameras, but now everybody has a phone to be able to take pictures of your damage. But what we encourage you to do, too, is to take pictures of your home inside and out beforehand. Um, work gloves, uh, examples of canned food, a lot of people, 
younger people um, is, is funny, is a can opener, a manual can opener. How many people even have one in their kitchen anymore? But if you get a can of soup, how are you going to open that can of soup? Um, uh, matches, then your typical uh, Tylenol or ibuprofen, hand cleaner, bug spray, suntan lotion, toilet paper, first aid kit, and tools. I uh, was at a presentation the other night that as bad as it may sound, if you are home and your lift station's not working and you need to use your toilet, there's no other way to put this but use a plastic bag. At least it's somewhere and you can seal that plastic bag up for later use, but to have plastic bags in your kit. And then you can add on further, further from there. So any questions about putting together a kit and have it transportable? Sure. Um, obviously, if you want the best, you would have a permanent mounted generator um, for your home. You're talking mega thousands of dollars. The caution we have for people are with the portable generators, and we say this because out of caution because this happens time and time again. A portable generator should not be running in your garage or your lanai. People die from carbon monoxide. So uh, the caution on a generator, whether it's a permanent mounted or a portable generator, is what's called back feed. If you have it hooked up improperly into the electrical um, system of your home, it could electrocute a first responder or a power company person because it's going backwards through the power grid rather than powering your house. So uh, it's like um, security and what the Sheriff's Office and Police Department talks about. Do you have a single lock, a deadbolt lock, alarm system? Same way with the generator. It's how much do you want to invest and how much do you want to run at once? Because a small portable generator, the little Honda type, is going to run a fan and a couple of lights. You're not going to run a refrigerator. You're not going to run your stove. So to go out and buy a small portable one, if you can put up with a single light and a fan, then that's all you need. If you want your stove and your air conditioning, then you're going to spend mega, megas of dollars. Very good. Uh, yes, starting today for the week is the tax-free weekend. It's been out pushed out on through your media outlets on social media, but that's a good reminder. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> The, the most important thing that we, the county, can do in a storm is communicate with the public and let them know the latest of the conditions in the county and what local officials are doing to respond to it. And, and, and in that messaging, we're able to relay pe to people what they should be doing uh, before, during, and after a storm. Um, social media in recent years has really been a game changer because we're able to reach the public directly when information is available. So uh, during Hurricane Irma and, and into the future, we'll be able to uh, broadcast live from here, the Emergency Operations Center, so that people, uh, residents in Manatee County are hearing straight from uh, the Emergency Management Chief, from our other elected, from elected officials and other community leaders about the latest and, and what they need to be doing rather than uh, having to uh, rely on, uh, rely on uh, um, delay that they may be experienced with some of the, the local media. So you're hearing it unedited, unfiltered, and live straight from uh, the officials who are uh, responding to the event. Sure. When, when, uh, when it appears that you know, severe weather is going to threaten our area, uh, we'll start getting notifications from the emergency management uh, division here within public safety and uh, at some point they may call for a, either a partial or a full activation of the emergency operations center that's where we are today and that triggers the call for first responders and representatives from uh, IT and fire and law enforcement to, to convene here in this building uh, to, to begin conversations about what each other is doing and that also prompts a regular uh, cadence of media briefings that we then relay the latest and what's going on here to the public and to help them understand what we're doing to be prepared uh, in the days be before the storm and to let them know whether there's ice available or whether there's sandbags available and what shelters are open and so forth so uh, we do our best to get that information across on our website uh, but social media now uh, is, is able to get people directly right when it happens.
Well, the school district is among the many community leaders who come here to uh, the emergency operations center when there's a, an emergency activation and in, um, in, in the case where there is a strong storm approaching. Uh, usually the mandate comes down from Tallahassee, uh, fr from the governor's office, and the governor will uh, sometimes direct certain communities to open their emergency shelters, and then we work very closely with the superintendent of schools to determine which shelters should be open um, and that's driven largely by um, where the storm is uh, projected to, to hit and, uh, or where the most residents can benefit by, uh, from them. So um, it's really a, a, a co collaborative approach that we're having conversations with the district to determine what uh, their, their resources are in terms of space and staff and, and, uh, and so forth. And, and then once those decisions are made with, uh, with the school district, then we relay the word to the public through uh, the media and social media as to where those shelters are available. You know, it's, um, it, it's, it's not to have a sense of complacency. We, we see how quickly, it's not just hurricanes, but severe weather approaches um, more often than ever, it seems like. And, and uh, you know, it, uh, only two weeks before Hurricane Irma, we had a severe rain that flooded out entire neighborhoods. And so uh, the importance of, of knowing the strength of your home uh, and whether you need to evacuate it in, in severe, severe weather. Uh, those code red warnings are especially helpful you'll get instant alerts on your smartphone on email or on your telephone at home uh, and you'll know exactly when the most important information is coming out from the county and the majority of the things in a kit can be there for um, years your, your can opener your your trash bags and things like that so uh, obviously we want to remind them to rotate their food out so it doesn't spoil although canned foods are good for a long while um, a big thing is their medicines, because we ran into that in Hurricane Michael. People evacuated, their homes were destroyed, they had no prescription, no pill bottles, no anything, and their doctors were closed. So make sure they take their medicine bottles with them if they do evacuate, or at least take a good week's worth of their medications with them. And, and one of the things, you were one of the key people up in the panhandle after, after the hurricane, what did you see that you think that was so important uh, that you wanted to bring back to Manatee County to, to kind of implement? Well, one is, as we talked about earlier, is, is knowing your home, knowing when to evacuate, and if you are going somewhere else, a shelter is good, but it's the last resort. What the biggest thing I can bring back to is it takes a community. It doesn't take emergency management, it doesn't take Manatee County, it takes the community. And when we talk about that, that's all of government, nonprofits, Red Cross, Salvation Army, so forth, and the people themselves coming together. Uh, I still track, there's a, there's a Facebook page um, dealing with Port St. Joe's, and it's the community that makes it happen, coming together, supporting one another. Sure. So, as we spoke earlier, the major storms recently has been over a three-day period, which is really quick. But in, in any storm, uh, we'll get notification from uh, the National Weather Service, National Hurricane Center. Uh, most of all, we get notified from the Florida Division of Emergency Management, and we normally have two conference calls a day statewide that they'll bring on the National Weather, National Hurricane Center, their own meteorologists to start uh, laying out the foundation of which direction the storm's coming, intensity. So what we, we have three levels of evacuation emergency management. Um, we're always at a level three that's called monitoring it. We're, uh, we always have emergency management person on call 24 hours a day. So that's a normal. Then we have um, level two, which um, as we look around the room, you see the markers on the table with numbers and names. Those are called emergency support functions. So from transportation to public works, to fire, to law enforcement, and so forth. So as a storm's, uh, let's say it's um, out in the Atlantic, um, we'll go from just monitoring it if we think we're gonna be impacted to a level two and start calling in um, the most important because if we looked around the room, uh, an example would be temporary housing. Well, we don't need that until a storm comes, um, things like that. So at a level two, uh, we may work a 12 or 18 hour day. 
Um, then uh, full activation level one, this room's packed with uh, over 150 people from all environments, from all um, parts of government. And there we'll go to 24 hours a day, so normally a 12-hour shift that's constantly things are going on. So uh, with that, as I mentioned, we have a minimum of two, two conference calls a day with just the state. We'll have at least one or two conference calls with our region, which goes from Mantee County south into Collier County. Again, what's going on? One of the very important things is, and I'm, I'm very happy to say, our neighbors, um, whether it's to the south of Sarasota, to the north Pine Ellis and Hillsboro, to the east, we as emergency management communicate daily because we have to be on the same um, same lines of when are we going to evacuate? Um, when is a curfew going to be? Especially with Sarasota. We have some distance between Tampa and St. Pete, but any more can anyone say when they leave Manatee County and go into Sarasota County? We share so many things that we have to be in constant contact that we're getting the same message out that the public's not confused on. So uh, we, we ramp up, as we call it, in, in levels, um, and then um, uh, make a determination of who all gets involved. But all facets of government, from law enforcement to fire, to utilities, to public works, and so forth. So a couple things on evacuation. Uh, what we're trying to impress now is, one is evacuate tens of miles and not hundreds of miles. If they saw footage or coverage during Hurricane Irma, roads were just solid backed up. It'd take you 18, 20 hours just to get into Georgia. Where in um, Mantee County, they could have probably gone out east. So the new initiative is learn your level, which is what evacuation level do you live in? Um, obviously, the first level is level A, the low-lying areas, but the most important about a level A is mobile homes and manufacturer homes must evacuate no matter where they're at. The wind just will not stand that. And the new initiative that we're doing is know your home. Know the construction of your home. So is it built after 2012 that it will stand 150 mile an hour wind or is it an older home that will blow over? And then knowing the type and the direction of the storm. Because if it's um, basically the worst part of the storm, as we put it during Hurricane Irma as an example, when the storm was in the Gulf of Mexico, people locally thought, we're in good shape, the storm's out in the Gulf. That's the wrong answer because the worst part of a storm, as we call it, is the right front door. So if you're looking at that cone, the right, and if it's in the Gulf, guess where we're at? The right front seat. So why we got less is as Hurricane Irma uh, drifted more east, we were on the opposite side, we're on the driver's side. So if it's out in the Gulf, we're gonna get worse weather than if it's coming across the state. So no one is it gonna be a heavy rainstorm. There can be hurricanes with minimal rain. So knowing what kind of winds are coming. And then um, encouraging people to go to friends and family because a shelter is a safe environment. It's the lifeboat, not a cruise ship. Most important is have a plan, and that plan includes knowing your level, knowing your home, knowing whether you're going to evacuate and where you're going to evacuate to if, if it comes to that.